Hello students, today I am going to discuss the chapter number one from your history book. The name of the chapter is Tracing Senses Through a Thousand Years. So first in this page is given that one map, see this map. So what is the map? Here it is said a section of the world map drawn by geographer Al Idrisi in 12th century showing the Indian subcontinent from land to sea. So here see this map actually see here this is Sri Lanka and this is the other part of the India. This map is given in the opposite direction. So this map see take a look at map 1 and map 2. So map 1, map 1 made in 1154 CE, CE means common era. So who is made this? This is made by the geographer all Idrisi. And again see next, the second section reproduced here is a detail of the Indian subcontinent from his larger map of the world and map 2. Map 2 which was made in 1720. First map, see, first map, it is made in 1154. Second map, it is made in 720. So, second map, see, let's see the second map. This is a second map. So, this is similar to the present Indian map. So, here all the language, the place of the name is given in English. But if we see the first map, here the name of the place we cannot identify because it is written in Arabic language. So, here one word we got cartographer. So, what is cartographer? Cartographer is given here. Cartographer, a person who makes map. Cartographer means who making map. Suppose here the first map is made by the all addressing. So, he is will be the cartographer. And the second map is made in 1720 by a French cartographer. So, after that, see next. The two maps are quite different even though they are of same area in all addressing map in all addressing map means the first map south india is where we would expect to find north india and sri lanka is the island at the top so here see sri lanka here in the top and the south indian part is below that so it is the opposite direction so again see place names in Arabic language. Arabic language is given in the map that's why we cannot identify the place. So after that see the second map. Second map here see the place of the name in English language. So again see here the map to the subcontinent from the early 18th century at last Nohew of Guillermo D. I. Isel. So here see and are some well-known names like Konos in Uttar Pradesh spelled in the map as Kunos. Map 2 was made nearly 600 years after map 1. So the first map made in which year? See, the first map made in 1154. The second map, second map here it is said that after the 600 years, means first map made in 1154 CE and second map in after this first map after 600 years so again see so here it's a conos conos actually here this plate like conos so map 2 was made nearly 600 years after map 1 and during which time inform about the subcontinent had sense considerably and this map seems most familiar to us mean the second map second map here see this map this map actually what this map is more familiar to us the coastal areas in particular are surprisingly detailed and this map was used by european sailor and martian on their voyages so here see here the coastal area all are given in english language and it is clearly written and that is why during the period there is no suppose invention of the road uh, when it is invented the sea road and when the merchant are used the sea road to business. So this is the coastal area which is given and the, by this the merchant are able to um, give, uh, run their business in different place 
here it is given the European sailor. They use this sea road. Voyage means is a road, sea road like to a long distance. So after that, see next. Equally important is the fact that the signs of cartography are different in two periods. When historians read documents, maps and texts from the past, they have to sensitive to different historical background, the context in which information about the past was produced. So actually here it is said that the historians, they use maps, documents and texts. Why? Because to collect the information of the past. So by seeing these texts, maps and documents, we are getting the information what was happened in the past. So after that, see here, new and old terminologies. So here see some, the most important words which was used in earlier in a different meaning and present day the meaning is different what is used in the ancient time. So what are the words seen? If the context in which information is produced changes with name, what about language and meanings? Historical records exist in variety of languages and which have changed considerably over the years. So medieval Persian, for example, if different from modern Persian, the difference is not just with regard to grammar and vocabulary, the meaning of words also sense over time. So here it is said that in medieval period, uh, in ancient times, whatever the word is used, their meaning is completely sense. Not only the grammar and vocabulary, the meaning of the words is sense over the time. So here one example is given, suppose Hindustan. So we all know that Hindustan, what is the meaning of Hindustan nowadays? So, if we see the ancient time, so here it is said that, take the term Hindustan for example, today we understand in Hindustan means what? India, the modern nation state. But when this term was used by the Minas E. Siras, he used this Hindustan in 13th century. In which century? 13th century. In 13th century, uh, he said that area of Punjab, Haryana and lands between lands between Ganga and Jamuna. This particular area known as the Hindustan according to Minasi Siras in 13th century. But see, he used the term in a political sense for land that were a part of the dominions of the Delhi Sultanates. But after that what see again? But the areas included in this term shifted with the extent of the sultanate but the term never included South India. By contrast, in the early 16th century, now see, in 13th century Minaji series, he used the Hindustan, the area only the Punjab, Haryana and the lands between Ganga and Emuna. But in 16th century, in 16th century, Babur used Hindustan to describe the geography, fauna and culture of the inhabitants of the subcontinent. So in the same way, Amir Khorsu, he was a famous poet, so he used the hint while the idea of geographical and cultural entity like India. But in present day, Hindustan not only used for only a particular area, it is did not carry the political and national meanings which is associated with today. So after this, see, historians today have to be careful about the terms they use because they mean different things in the past. Again, see one example again, suppose foreigner. Foreigner in present day, what is the meaning of foreigner? Foreigner means we use this word to mean someone who is not Indian. But in ancient times, see, in the medieval period, foreigner means what? Foreigner means was a stranger. Stranger means who are unknown person, who appeared, say, in a given village, someone who was not a part of that society or culture. Suppose when you are suppose living in a state, suppose Assam, suppose someone coming from uh, Gujarat, so then he will be called the foreigner. It is actually used in the medieval period. But now, whom we call foreigner? who are not belongs to our country. So again see, someone who was not a part of that society or culture 
in hindi the term pardesi might be used to describe as a person means foreigner pardesi and ajnabi in persian ajnabi the same meaning so in this way the foreigner what used in the medieval period to those person who are not familiar to that area or fields so in this way different type of word used for different meanings after that see the next next important topic is historians and their sources so from where the historians collecting the information so we already know that the maps documents and texts are used as a sources for the history again there are some sources see historians use different type of sources to learn about the past depending upon the period of their study and nature of their investigation so last year for example you read about rulers of the gupta dynasty you have read about the gupta dynasty in class 6 so in gupta dynasty the last king was the harsavardhana so after harsavardhana so in this book we will discuss after the harsavardhana so the period we will discuss in this chapter mainly this 700 to 7 750 this thousand years what is happened during this thousand year we will discuss in this book so see you will notice some continuity in sources used by historians for the study of this period they still rely on coins so what are the sources for history see one is coins second is inscription third is architecture fourth is textual records so these are the sources from these sources the historians collecting the information of the past but here thing is that but there is also considerable discontinuity the number and variety of textual records textual record what increase dramatically during this period they slowly displace other types of available information through this period paper gradually become cheaper and more widely available people used to used it to write holy texts chroniclers of ruler chroniclers means who record the all the things of the history he is known as the chroniclers so letters and teaching of saint petition and judicial record and for registers of account at taxes so here see in ancient times there was no printing so most of the people are they used to write in the leaf of the tree or suppose in uh, on the stones so like that there is no paper so they whatever the manuscript so here one word is given very important word this is manuscript manuscript means what manuscript were collected by the wealthy people rulers and monasteries and temples they were placed in the libraries and archive so archive actually what archive the meaning of archive is given archive means a place where documents and manuscripts are stored today all national and state government have archive where they keep all their old official records and transactions so here we got got that inscription and manuscript so these are the documents a kind of documents where the past record past are recorded by the different type of people so this manuscript actually used for giving the information of the past and by using this manuscript we are the historians nowadays collecting the information this manuscript and inscription these are kept where in the libraries and archive so archive and library actually is the same things so it is a, a kind of a library where the important documents and manuscript books are kept so again see here so at that time again see, there was no printing press in those days so scripts scripts means who are the suppose talent person and literate person who copied the things from the manuscript to the print so there was no printing press in those days and so scripts copied manuscript by hand so if you have ever copied a friend homeworks you would know that this is not a simple exercise sometimes you cannot read your friend handwriting and are forced to guess with what is written so as a result there are small small big significant differences in your copy of your friend's works so here it is said that the manuscript or inscription who is are written by the hand so that is why when it is copied by the scribes from manuscript to the printing so there is a some displacement of the words 
so here example is given that suppose you absent in one day in your school so in the next day when you copy the copy whatever given by your teacher by asking a copy from your friend so sometimes what happen you also unable to understand what is written by your friend so at that time you written some word in different meanings or different word whatever is exactly written in your friend copy because you are unable to understand that is why you have written the different words so in this way when the from the manuscript whatever is written it is written by the hand so when it is copied in the printing so there is a significant difference so that is why it is said that as scribes copied manuscript they also introduce sm small senses a word here a sentence and these small differences grew over centuries of copying until manuscripts of the manuscript of the same text become substantially different from one another so this is a serious problem because we rarely find the original manuscript of the author today so we are totally dependent upon the copies made by the later scribes as a result historians have to read different manuscript version of the same text to guess what the author had originally written so that is why whatever written in manuscript and whatever is written in printing so there is a significant difference so that is why to get the original or exact history sometimes what happen the historians need to study the manuscript which is originally written so that is why it takes time to get the exact history so again here they said that on occasions author revised their chronicles at different times the 14th century see here the 14th century the chronicler ziauddin barani who wrote wrote his chronicle first in 19 uh, 1356 and another person two years later so first he written ziauddin barani he written in 14th century again after two years to differ from each other but historians did not know about the existence of the first person until the 1960s so it remained lost in lars library collection so here it is said that in 39 1356 whatever written by jaudin barani so after two years later when he written in another so there is a first difference the first one and second one so in this way and where the first one is exist so to get this knowledge it take time up to 1960 so here it is said that there is a significant differences between the two books or two manuscripts because manuscripts written by the hand and when it is printing or copied in the printing so there is a significant difference so that is why to get the exact history sometimes the historians need to study both the manuscripts or the printings so here again see here uh, it is said that this figure different kinds of handwritten handwriting could make the reading of persian and arabic difficult the nastaliq style on the left is cursive and easy to read the sikasti on the right in the denser and more difficult so here it is given this type of manuscript so here again one picture is given this figure so a painting of scribes making a copy of a manuscript so this is a copy and again here it is given this this painting is only 10.5 cm by 7.1 cm in size because of its size it is called a miniature so miniature means what miniature paintings were sometimes used to illustrate the text of the manuscripts so they were so beautiful that the letter collection often took a manuscript apart and sold just the miniature so miniature is actually a painting so it is very colorful that time so here we have got most important things one is that archives what is archives so a place where the documents and manuscripts are stored so in this way, whatever the bold word in your book you should read this bold word because this is very important to understand the next topic so after that the next 